everyone, and thank you for joining us on the Oshkosh Capital Connection, your opportunity to stay connected to our state lawmakers and connect that to how it affects us right here in the Oshkosh community um, and what we can look forward to in the upcoming quarter uh, from our state lawmakers. So with that, I'm your host, Emily Springstrow, joined by Representative Gordon Hintz, and we'd like to thank you, Representative Hintz, for joining us today on hey, Oshkosh Capital Connection. Always glad to be here. It's always great to have you, and we always have plenty to talk about, too. You're a very busy guy. Um, a lot going on at the state level, and really the, the first thing that we want to talk about today is the budget. Um, it is just recently passed. Um, tell us first a little bit about the process that you go through um, to approve the budget. Yeah, well, this year, this budget was a little different. So we do a two-year budget. It goes from July 1st of this year till June 30th of two years from now. Um, the process started in February when the Governor Evers introduced the budget. Um, we have divided government, so first time in a while we've got a Democrat as governor, uh, and Republicans that control the legislature. And it was a process I think everybody was struggling to adjust to, but the governor laid out a pretty bold proposal trying to address issues like funding transportation, uh, investing in education, and expanding affordable health care access, and saving money through the Medicaid expansion. Um, you know, and there was a lot of uh, changes made to the budget by the ones that the Republicans pushed through the Joint Finance Committee. Um, on the one hand, they did increase investments more than they had over the last eight years in a lot of areas, including transportation, um, education, and they did invest more in our state's health care system and the Medicaid program. Um, on the other hand, they rejected the federal Medicaid expansion money. That was part of the Affordable Care Act that 37 other states have drawn down federal dollars to pay for expanded coverage, which would have saved uh, Wisconsin taxpayers $324 million that we would have been able to invest in other things. Um, it didn't fund special education at the level that Governor Evers had proposed, but it did put some money into it. Mm -hmm. And with transportation funding, it increased registration fees. And of course, um, that hits my mom, who drives 500 miles a year, uh, the same as it hits me, who drives 30,000 miles a year, and it doesn't capture any Illinois residents or Minnesota residents. So. Um, they also took some money from the general fund, and we'll be back in the same place in two years. But um, the governor made some vetoes. It was somewhat of an awkward prog uh, process. Um, I think there was a lot of missed opportunities. But um, you know, Governor Evers' election and introduction of his budget, I think, still changed the outcome enough where there were some positives, uh, some things we've been advocating for locally. Um, such as increased pay for our workers at Winnebago Mental Health and at the um, correctional facility. Um, finally, we're able to get through. Uh, the city didn't fare as well. Um, no new money to the city, and so they'll be working under tight constraints again, and we've seen inflation go up faster than their ability to pay. I think that was a missed opportunity, and um, pretty much the status quo for UW Oshkosh, which uh, isn't great either. So definitely a different process this year, like you you had said, it's very divided. Um, and you know, do you, do you see this as kind of like almost a transitional year that you know we go into the next year and kind of get a, a, a swing of things? Could well, you say? again, when you had you know Governor Walker and the Republican legislature, they didn't get a budget done last time, even though they're of the same party until September. Mm -hmm. And so there are always disagreements between the executive branch and the legislative branch. Um, you know, in this case, it was just very different priorities, but. And the compromise didn't happen really at the table. It was the governor did a budget and the compromise was more, well, we'll do some of that, but we won't do other things. And I think, you know, some people wanted to have a veto of the whole budget and a larger fight. I think Governor Reavers did the responsible thing, made some changes with his partial veto and said, let's get schools their money on time. Let's get these road projects going uh, and we can address some of the other issues in the next budget. Definitely. You talked about some of the local implications of the budget and how, um, you know, some of the health care and as well as the correctional and uh, county employees and, you know, the direct effect on the city's budget, too. Maybe talk a little bit more about that and tell us what we'll see. Right. Well, the big one for years has been the shared revenue program. Um, you know, at one point the city or the state said, you know, you can't assess manufacturing equipment. Um, uh, property taxes, and so in exchange there were payments made to, this, uh, to municipalities from the state um, to help fund services. That money has been cut dramatically and has been stagnant. At the same time, we have limits on how much revenue the city can, um, can raise, and we have health care, energy, labor costs that are going up, additional needs. Um, and we have fewer resources to deal with. And uh, I think something needs to be done if we're going to have a state that recognizes that communities like Oshkosh are key to our future success. If we want to recruit young people and families to live here, 
they don't want beat up streets, they don't want beat up schools, they don't want beat up sidewalks and parks. And, um, you know, so that, that'll have to wait another two years, but it's not just this part of the state, it's other parts as well. Um, mm -hmm. UW Oshkosh, we were able to get some, uh, the second part of CLO, uh, which had been done in 2014 or 15, and this has been a priority, it kind of got bumped, and so worked with Senator Fine and Representative Shra to make sure that that at least got some initial funding so it can get going. Um, you know, but a uh, lot of challenges, I guess, long term. Um, we didn't really address the transportation issue uh, with some sustainable revenue, and we'll be back in two years to try to fix that. Definitely. Uh, you talked about working with Senator Fine, and um, there was a lot of um, connection happening here in Oshkosh as the budget led up to being approved. So um, talk about how important it was that you were here and available to Oshkosh citizens for your listening sessions, um, as well as working with Senator Fine on that. Yeah, well, I mean, locally, uh, the labels drop. I mean, you hear the same issues from people, and to the extent that you can kind of get together and support the things that are important to your community, um, that's a relationship I've always had, um, you know, with Senator Ressler, Senator Hopper, Senator King, Senator Fine. I guess I've been around for a while, uh, Representative <laughs> Shaw. Um, you know, you work together when you can and disagree when you have to. Um, but obviously the public's input was the most important, and we certainly heard a lot from people that wanted the Medicaid expansion, um, that wanted special education to be funded at a higher level uh, for our schools. And, and I, you know, worked with the city officials and from uh, the school district officials as well. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, tried to get out there. Uh, I'll be at the farmer's market this Saturday, July 20th from 9 to 12, so I encourage people to stop by there, do my regular office hours at the senior center. Um, usually it's the last Friday of the month, but check the bulletin for that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's the most important thing is kind of where are people on a lot of these issues? What's an important priority? And um, trying to communicate with them what's happening in Madison. Definitely. Um, so if people are looking for more information, they could obviously could come visit you at the farmer's market or your office hours. Um, any other contacts that they can reach out for to hear from you or specifically on the, the new budget as well? Sure. Um, I have gordonhints.com. Try to keep it pretty easy, which will direct you to my legislative website. Uh, if you email me, we will automatically get back to you. I have a phone number locally as well as at the state level, and we're on Twitter and Facebook and trying to find as many ways as possible to touch people and, and, and have avenues to share information that's happening so I can get uh, input. Uh, hopefully be out on some doors um, Mondays, Fridays, and Saturdays, uh, you know, coming up here just to kind of get feedback on what's happening. Uh, hopefully it's not too hot. Oh, hopefully it will be cool enough for you. But um, yeah, a lot of great channels to reach you and to get more information on um, state level things. So now that the budget's over, what are your priorities moving forward? What, what's next for you? Well, the budget is usually sort of like, you know, 80% of the things that directly impact people the most, um, you know, local services, schools, healthcare, um, is done in the budget. Uh, that being said, um, you know, we're still dealing with opioids. There's a task force on water quality that mm -hmm. is looking at everything from lead to uh, farm runoff that, you know, we hopefully will get some bipartisan bills out of. Um, if you look at what ails us politically, redistricting reform is something as we head into the next census when we draw the legislative districts that is a priority if we're going to let the people pick their politicians and not mm -hmm. the other way around. And I think that has been a problem that's gotten a lot of national attention and with the Supreme Court ruling that they can gerrymander like this. Um, it's something the state should address. We're going to be highlighting that issue. Uh, I'm still working on ways to build vaccine awareness so we can address that and in, uh, in some public health efforts. And um, we've got some other things on predatory lending that we hope to get out uh, in the next few months and hopefully at least get some attention on, if not some legislative action. So definitely a lot to keep you busy. Enough. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you always think things will wind down after the budget, but it doesn't seem to always go that way. No shortage <laughs> of things. I mean, I'm here in Oshkosh more, um, which is nice. We're not, there's not session for uh, a bit. So we, by getting the budget on time, that certainly improved things. But this is usually the time I use my opportunities to schedule more meetings with businesses, local governments, individuals, trying to do annual check-ins on, you know, what are you seeing? What can we do at the state level? And um, you know, also know that, you know, you want to get ideas out there, work with other members to try to get support for things and uh, figure out the best way to get attention. Yes. And which brings me back, if you could just give us one more recap on where people can reach you and where we can just follow along with what you're up to. Sure. Well, you can go to gordonhints.com, um, which will direct you to my state legislative website. You can also find me on Twitter. Uh, I think it's Gordon Hints. Um, and on Facebook, uh, certainly can search and um, always email or call me. Uh, I've got a local number and a Madison number. 
fabulous. Um, anything else you'd like to add before we close out on this segment of Oshkosh Capital Connection? No, just, you know, there's a lot of things going on. We can't do our jobs without the input of people. Uh, the, my constituents have always been great about, you know, if you have a problem with the state, if you've got a question about, you know, unemployment, tax returns, uh, anything, uh, feel free to contact my office and we'll do our best to get you in the right direction. And if there are issues or other things you want to work on, um, I'm happy to schedule a meeting with you or give you a call. Always available and ready to chat, right? That's right. Wonderful. Well, I'd like to thank you for joining us in the studio today, Gordon, for the Oshkosh Capital Connection. Thanks for having me. Excellent. And thank you to our viewers for getting plugged in and connected on what's going on at the state level, how it's going to be affecting us right here in Oshkosh. Um, we'd like to direct you to all of the different avenues that you can reach us and watch this program on Oshkosh Media. Um, you can ch check us out on Facebook and YouTube to watch it and share um, with others, as well as government updates and community videos as well. You can also watch us on Spectrum Cable Channel 10, at and UVerse, Channel 99, Apple TV, Roku, or live on our website at oshkoshmedia.org. And then, of course, finally, you can reach us on the radio if you'd like to listen to 101.9 Oshkosh FM. Uh, so once again, thank you very much for joining us on the Oshkosh Capital Connection, and we'll see you next time.